Hey guys, Mike here and today we're going to have a quick look at the Nokia Asha 205, a very basic and also very affordable mobile phone. So this is not the kind of devices I'm usually reviewing, but if you're after a regular phone for taking calls, texting and some other basic stuff, you might find it good enough. We'll start this clip by showing you what comes in the box next to this phone and we'll continue with the actual review shortly after that. It comes to no surprise that the Nokia Asha 205 looks and feels like a budget mobile phone. Even so, the plastic casing is not really that bad and the slight texture on the back of the phone does offer a fair amount of grip. Our version comes in a mix of black and cyan, but this handset is also going to be available in several other colors. Of course, the rear plate can be easily popped open and behind it there's the battery, the SIM slot and the microSD card slot. Having a look around this phone, you'll find out that there are no ports or buttons on its edges except for a charging pin on top and a 3.5mm headphone jack next to it. There's a headset included in the box and it's short of impressive, but this phone is not really designed for multimedia anyway. The camera on the back is of no good either as it can only take VGA pictures and some extremely low resolution 10 frames per second clips. Anyway, moving on, there's a standard non-touch 2.4 inch screen on the front of this Nokia and a QWERTY keyboard. The 320 by 240 pixel resolution is just standard in this segment and since the screen is so small, the content is going to look decent on it as long as you're inside or in a dim environment. In strong light, the highly reflective coating on top of the screen will get annoying. Back to that keyboard though, I can say that it's decent, the keys feel more crammed than on the Asha 302 or other QWERTY Nokia handsets I've played with in the past, despite their island style and even though this phone is actually wider than those. But unless you have really big thumbs, you should get along fine with it. There's a D-pad on top of the keyboard flanked by a dedicated Facebook button on one side and another customizable one on the other. This Asha 205 is running Nokia's S40 operating system, so you're only getting the basics with it. You can somewhat customize the front screen and change the shortcuts and the infos displayed over there, but don't expect anything fancy. On the other hand, the phone is going to be decently snappy as long as you haven't clogged up the memory. And that can happen sooner than you'd think as there's a very limited amount of RAM on this phone. There are a couple of apps pre-installed like Facebook, Twitter or eBuddy, plus a store where you can find others including a bunch of free EA games available for download in the first 60 days after you've bought the phone. The handset has limited internal storage but supports up to 32GB microSD cards, so there's plenty of space for your apps and content. The email manager is decent for this class and the Nokia Express browser with Flash and JavaScript support is not that bad either. However, there's one thing you're going to find extremely annoying when trying to browse or download stuff from the store. The Nokia Asha 205 lacks both Wi-Fi and 3G connectivity, so the only way you're actually getting online is via Edge and edge speeds are so 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 slow. As a side note, Nokia did bundle their 205 with this thing called SLAM that allows you to send files via Bluetooth quicker and without having to pair devices in advance. Interesting, but it only works with compatible Nokia phones and a bunch of Android devices. Anyway, there's little more to add about this Nokia Asha 205, so in the next couple of seconds I'm going to show you how this phone deals with a couple of everyday activities.
As expected, the 205 handles basic phone tasks quite well, like taking and receiving calls, sending text messages and so on. Note that we have the single SIM version of the Asha 205 here, but there's a dual SIM option available as well, with a hot swappable extra SIM slot on one side and I think most of you will be interested in that one. But while not a smartphone, the Nokia Asha 205 is a bit more than a regular dumb handset and it offers a bunch of useful apps and games. But since it runs S40, uh, you're not going to get some goodies like multitasking and Nokia's maps for instance. Even so, the 205 has plenty to offer and considering it's a very affordable device, I believe it will get quite popular on emerging markets from Asia, Africa or Eastern Europe. Personally, I don't get it why there's no Wi-Fi on this phone, but besides that there's little I could nag about it. Even the battery life is good. Although there's only a rather small 1020mAh battery inside this phone, it can easily run for 2 or 3 days on each charge, with medium use or even longer if used lightly. So in the end, the Asha 205 can be a good option if you're after a fairly nice looking and cheap phone with a QWERTY keyboard. Just make sure to know exactly what it can and cannot do before buying it to save yourself of any future surprises. Ok, that's about it for now. Thank you for watching and let me know what do you think about the Nokia Asha 205 in the comments below. Besides that, make sure to leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed this clip and I'll catch you guys soon.